If you dishonestly call a candidate who is going to be the president of the United States in a very likely scenario, a racist, and you pose all this nonsensical evidence of that that is not there and you know it, then you do not care about the United States and all you care about is getting elected because when he gets elected, what have you just done? You've set the table to where all the blacks in America who listen to your campaign believe that the president of the United States hates them. Like really genuinely hates them. And it's a lie. So I assume everybody feels like they have a pretty good handle on what happened at the Butler rally, not in terms of what happened, you know, in advance or whatever, but you feel like you know what happened and there can't be any new information that's going to come out in a new video, but that would be incorrect. Uh, so we have two new videos from the rally that I'm going to show you. And one of them is like really shocking. I, I use hyperbole in my titles and thumbnails because it's YouTube. That is how you do this game successfully. But the only problem is that sometimes you use a word like shocking uh, and you use it too much to where when you want to say like, no, this is like really shocking. It doesn't land the way that you would hope. And uh, so I really want to reiterate that this video that I'm going to show you uh, is actually very shocking and not not in terms of the well, you've got two two videos. One of them is shocking because it apparent it appears to show the uh, the Secret Service counter sniper who, by the way, First time counter snipers had been at a Trump rally ever, ever just happened to be the one where people took a shot at him. Very bizarre, you know, but it act seems to show the counter sniper looking into his scope right at the shooter, right at the shooter and then lifting up and waiting for him to take the shot before going back down and, and returning fire. It's a really bad look, dude. But the one that I say is really shocking is is the other one. And that one uh, does not have to do with what happened and it's more about show a visual of the reality of what happened to the people in the stands uh because this is a video of the stands and when he starts shooting and you see the people standing there and you actually see the rounds it, it's uh i don't know man there's like because even even in when when trump was hit in the ear obviously you know i'm sure a lot of you guys shoot and you have a pretty good understanding you know you shoot like the the outcome of pulling the trigger on a rifle but when you can actually see bullet impact, bullet impact, you know, bang, bang, and the people in between rifle and impact are innocent people in the stands, it is wild. And that is what we're going to look at. Uh, but we're going to do that in the second portion of this video because the other portion of the video, so we got part one, part two, and part one is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen literally in my entire life. And thus... Uh, I want to make sure that I do that one first because the second version, you know, the second point is going to make me mad uh, or upset. And this is just, whole, it, it, this is the most absurd attack on him ever. Okay. Ever. And I realize that is a very hyperbolic statement, right? Like the most dishonest, stupidest attack on Donald Trump. Okay. On Donald Trump. Okay. That's where we're going to this right here, right? The dumbest in the history of Trump. This is the dumbest. It's like saying, uh, you know, someone's like, listen, man, this is the biggest guy to ever play in the NBA. You're all, come on, dude. You know, that's a weird metaphor, but you get the point. Like he's obviously been on the wrong end of some of the most dishonest and idiotic attacks ever. And by the way, we're not talking, we're just talking about the media, okay? This is the stupidest one of all, okay? So that is what we're going to do. And by the way, if you, uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel, I don't know how you found this video, but it is incredibly rare that that would happen. And actually, I will show you right now exactly what I mean. Now, I'm plugging this little piece in in post-production because when I went to go show you what I was talking about, I found a pattern that was unbelievable that is very important for people to see. However, social media platform manipulation of distribution of content about this guy is obviously about as important as you could get, but it ended up being longer than I anticipated. And so I just want to put this in here right now that the last uh, probably three to four minutes of this video are going to be about the statistics related to that, that I just show, oh, I'll show you. So I opened my own channel analytics publicly. I've never seen anyone do that before to show you and demonstrate the point, but that'll be the last chapter of this video and definitely check it out if you care about the outcome of the election. Man, I'm just over delivering in this video. You guys just don't know yet because you haven't seen that section, but here's the deal. Also, really quick, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Yo Kratom. If you're a daily Kratom user and you buy in bulk, go to Yo Kratom, $60 kilograms, best source on the internet. All right, so let's jump into what I promised you, which is the stupidest, most illogical and devious, complete and total lie 
uh, smear of Trump that I've ever seen. Now, what do they always say about this guy? Okay, like what is their like, what's their number one go-to for why people should not like or vote for Trump? It's because he's a racist, right? He's a huge racist that uh, seems to have a lot of, you know, like friendly black supporters that he's very, very kind to, invites places and, you know, like it's just, it doesn't really make sense, but they will just continue to harp on that. And it's like, don't believe your eyes. Trust us. He's racist. Listen to this absolute freaking nonsense. Okay. So the Kamala Harris campaign accused Trump of deliberately choosing sundown towns with racist histories for his rallies. Okay. And I want to be very clear what uh, sundown town is when we get into this. Okay. Critics point to a troubling pattern of campaign stops in Midwestern towns that Kamala Harris's campaign has called a racist bullhorn. Okay. I really, really want you to think about what could be a more disgusting and damaging smear than to call a candidate that has a very good chance of winning the election a racist. Okay. There's nothing worse than being a racist except a kitty diddler. Okay. If you don't victimize kids, the next worst thing you can do, aside from maybe beating up women, is to be a racist, okay? And you're saying that about a guy who is potentially going to be the president of the United States again. It's a disgust, it, it demonstrates that you prioritize your own campaign and your you know ability to get elected over the United States of America, period. I'm not gonna move on that. I am gonna say that I am not gonna move on that. If you, if you dishonestly call a candidate who is going to be the president of the United States in a very likely scenario, a racist, and you pose all this nonsensical evidence of that that is not there and you know it, then you do not care about the United States and all you care about is getting elected because when he gets elected, what have you just done? You've set the table to where all the blacks in America who listen to your campaign believe that the president of the United States hates them, like really genuinely hates them. And it's a lie. It's a lie. So again, more garbage from that side. All right, so let's read this idiotic article, okay? So listen to this. During a campaign stop at the Livingston County Sheriff's Office in Howell, Michigan, Donald Trump suggested that deputies there should be deployed to the majority black city of Detroit, okay? Deputies there should be deployed to, let's just, like, let's, let's pull out all of the gaslighting, completely irrelevant information in here, information that is put into the article to make it seem like this is something that it's not. Okay, deployed to the majority black city of Detroit. What are you talking about? So suggested that deputies from Mich from Howell, Michigan should be deployed to Detroit, right? Okay, that's what he said. And then he said, I'd love to have them working there during the election. He told a group on August 20th, standing in front of, a, of law enforcement officials in squad cars. A week later, Trump held a town hall in La Crosse, Wisconsin. The next day, he rallied in Johnstown, uh, Pennsylvania. He will speak in the town of Mosini, Wisconsin on September 7th. Okay, he's doing town halls, right? These relatively small cities spread across Midwestern swing states and far from the dense metropolitan areas all have one thing in common. They are former sundown towns where threats of Jim Crow era violence enforced racial segregation. What are you talking about? Like, you really think that we can't all play this game in any city in the country? Are you, are you sure? Like, oh my God, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris campaigned in Miami, Florida, where in the 70s, Castro sent a bunch of people from Cuba who were former, you know, were ex, you were exiled from the Cuba. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you could... You, what on earth, you really believe that that has anything to do with why he's campaigning there? After a series of rallies in major blacks, in major cities to kick off his general election campaign. Okay, so you're acknowledging, you're acknowledging that he campaigned in all of these major cities, right? So that, that's a thing. But now the Republican president candidate zeroed in on a handful of cities with familiar pasts. 
wow, gee, I'm sure that's why he's going there versus they are big counties in swing states, probably. Viral criticism across social media has argued that Trump's latest campaign stretch isn't a coincidence, but a dog whistle to racist supporters. Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign accused the former president of deliberately campaigning in the former KKK capital of Michigan. Wow, dude. Wow. They are shameless, dude. They are absolutely shameless. They have no shame. They don't care about this country. They don't care about the outcome, or at the very least, they don't care if they just absolutely like tear at the fabric of the country if it helps them get elected. These people play the, ra- you're telling me that my side is are the racists, really? My side are the racists. Okay, I'm not mad about this just because I hope this guy wins the election. I'm mad about this because I actually understand people. If you actually listen to any of my policy ideas or anything that I think is important, underneath, you will hear that the way I think about it is impact on people and impact on the collective every single time, okay? And what I'm saying is that by convincing one side that the other side is racist when it's not true is just as bad as the as one side actually being racist. And so if they're not, but you just convince everybody that they are to win the election, then you're the one who has created the damage. Like you're the ones that did it. There's, I mean, there's no rational person who could actually say that they think that Donald Trump hates black people or supports the KKK. It's ridiculous. It's a complete and total fucking lie. And anyone with a brain knows that. Okay. Oh, well, think about what they said about Kamala. Oh, you mean that she's garbage at her job? Well, he said, is she Indian or is she black? Yeah, he said that because she went into a black church and put on a fake accent, which I would find, you know, uh, patronizing, you know, like if it was me, but I don't get whatever. And he was saying, oh, no, so now she's black. How come in this picture, she's literally in like, you know, traditional Indian outfit. Like, so this, which is she? He's calling her disingenuous. That's not a racist comment. I don't care what you say. That's not racist. He is calling her disingenuous, which she was. You're saying that he is dog whistling to white supremacists. Trump's campaign has denied the accusations. Yeah, obviously. Civil rights groups and city leaders have worked over the decades to recover the communities from the sundown label. So named, this is irrelevant, dude warnings to non-white people to stay off the streets after sunset with the implicit okay so when was that when was that again a hundred years ago (laughs) like we're talking about a hundred years ago hey also when this happened you also were just finding out that you know human beings could build devices that would fly in the air for a period of time you know like we were just starting to figure out single manned airplanes at the time you know, and that's why this this is super relevant to 2024. A former president's uh, a president's event at sheriff's office on August 20th wasn't just a dog whistle from Trump, according to a statement from Harris campaign spokesperson Alyssa Bradley. The town of Howell has long been associated with the KKK's presence in Michigan, thanks to the state's former Grand Dragon Robert Miles, who recruited auto workers into the KKK and staged hate rallies, cross burnings. Uh, in the majority white county. When was this exactly? What? When When was this? Okay, let me look. Uh, here, let's do this, guys. Here. Let's, uh, let's just do a quick Google search of this dude. Uh, and let's just see what we come up with. Like, when was this guy born? Uh, oh, born. Oh, wow. He was born in 1925. Okay. And here you go. 1970 founded the Mountain Church of Jesus Christ and and uh, becoming a religious leader. <laughs> Dude. Okay, here we go. So in 1971, uh, he was arrested for conspiring to bomb schools. So this thing that they're talking about was in the 60s. Okay, what they are referencing happened in the 60s. Does that seem reasonable to assume that that is why Donald Trump is doing these rallies at this place? It's so stupid. I can't, dude. This is where Donald Trump is choosing to hold his rallies, said a TikTok user. 
You got a presidential candidate for the GOP doing a sundown town tour around the country, not looking for political gain. He's effing rallying the troops. What is this brain rot, dude? Uh, honestly, when I talked to Destiny and he kept like being like, hey, dude, you know, well, you know, the MAGA people, whatever. I'm not doing that. I am not pretending like every Kamala Harris voter is this stupid and crazy. But people who are this stupid and crazy, you're stupid and crazy. Like, this is so insane. If you actually believe this, you have a mental problem. That's how idiotic you are, dude. Did the media write the same story when Joe Biden visited Howell in 2021 or when Kamala Harris visits it? No, because it's nonsense. They shouldn't have written it about them. They shouldn't write it about, about Trump. It's just absolute bullshit. Trump communicated, are you going to ask Kamala Harris why she has done events in all of these places? Exactly. Oh, so it's it's a racist dog whistle in towns, every single one of them that you have done rallies at? Like, get the fuck, I can't, dude. So like I said, this is the stupidest, this is the stupidest fake racist slander I have ever seen in the history of slandering Donald Trump. So believe it or not, I did that article first because I was like, this, I, I don't want, like, I think, I thought I could do it and make it funny, but it's just so infuriating that I failed, you know, like it's that, that is stuff. It's just infuriating, man. But anyway, now let's get to the kind of thing that should have actual emotional impact on anyone uh, with a heart. So this is, so we got two new angles that we're going to look at. Number one is this new angle of the shooting shows attendees in the stands under fire. Now, I have I don't have a date on this, but I'm telling you, I had never seen this, which means I'm sure a lot of you have not seen it. In, in the event that you had seen this, I'm, I'm sorry. We've got another one that is actually for 100% sure, brand new of the uh, counter snipers. But so again, uh, it shows the attendees under fire. Okay, it's there's a graphic warning. I, I don't know if I'm missing something because as far as I can tell, I didn't see anyone get hit. But um, anyway, check this out. And look what happened to our country. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. All right, that chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Dude, you see, what is that guy in the, in the military green shirt doing? He is oblivious, but watch this. Look at, see that you see on the bottom right corner where the round hits the, uh, the round hits that and wall the right worst there. President see, the watch, watch the black. Took over. And look what happened to us. So when the shooting starts, look at the black. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, wanna really see something that said, take a look at what happened. See? Right, that chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said... Wait a minute, dude. Let me make... Actually, you know what? This... I just realized... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, I just realized something. Okay, so, like, when you do uh, OBS, sometimes there's a tiny little delay in the audio versus the video. Like, the longer that you're on OBS... The, so, I was watching this on my OBS and I heard the sound through the way that it was. And then it, it you know, it, it hit the, it hit the black and I didn't realize it's probably like a, you know, a couple milliseconds delayed. And so in my mind, what I was about to say is, is like, wait, he's gotta be way further away, way further away than 150 yards for that delay. And I realized it's just my software. So apologies, but still take a look at what happened. Watch. Boom right there, man, that's scary, dude. So yeah, that's that. I don't really have anything to say about that except uh, what I've said to anyone who has talked to me about this, which is like, it's just, it's just a, an unbelievable tragedy. You're just chilling with your kids. You get shot and killed in front of them. It's like, I can't, I just can't imagine a worse, a worse thing that could possibly happen than me getting violently killed in front of my children, you know? But anyway, so this is the, uh, this is the new video of, um, you know, the Secret Service guy, and you tell me what you think of this. And Sam here with you fighting like hell to get a senator elected. 
and to make sure we take back the White House, because if we do, we're going to make America better than ever before. We're going to make it. And it's not easy, because we have millions and millions of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have drug dealers. We have people that should not be here. And it's much tougher than if it happened. The, you know, we had the strongest border ever. In recorded history, we had the best border. In fact, if they could ever put up a chart, I don't know if they could do it. Do you guys have access to that chart that I love so much? You don't mind if I go off teleprompter, do you? Because these teleprompters are so damn boring, I try and explain them. Oh, it is a wow. And that's why people love him. That's why people love him. Literally, hey, what is the what's the best thing he's got going? They're all whoa, they, they love him because he's racist. It's like no, they're all yeah, they love him because he hates women. No, they love him because they're white trap. No, it's because he is a regular person who talks like a regular person, and so people are like, I feel like I can trust this guy because he's not giving me some canned pre-recorded, you know, agreed to thing in advance. Sorry, I just realized I'm stepping on the They're getting better with time. My guys, take a look at that chart. Take a look at the arrow on the bottom. See the big red, red arrow, right? So that's what I left office. That was the lowest point, and that comes right from the government services, comes right out of Border Patrol. Take a look at that. So that arrow is the lowest amount of illegal immigration ever in recorded history into our country. And then... Now watch this. And then the... Bam. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Right when we turn it back on, look to the left side of the video and you'll see the Secret Service guy port, like, put, like set up on the roof and you'll see him look down his scope and then, and then come back and then wait for the shooting to start. Watch. The worst president in the history of our country took over. See him? And look Straight what up. happened Straight up. Right down to the scope. Country. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Look at his reaction. Okay. But go back because he actually... He does seem to like when he starts shooting, kind of go back to the scope. I want to really Watch. see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh, yeah. See? So when I saw when I saw people cover this previously, they they were like, I don't know, I don't know what their take was, you know. But what I will say now after watching it again is it appears that he behaves in a, you know, likely to have been real manner once the shots start, okay? Once the shots start, he just kind of go, you know, because it shots start and then he goes, you know, in, in a in a smooth fashion, gets back down on the on the scope, but you don't see him going like this, you know? You don't see him going like this. There's, I mean, there's, there's obviously, I'm not going to pretend like there's anything conclusive at all in that video, but it does appear that he's not frantically looking around. It seems like he, because the only question is whether he saw him or he didn't prior to the shooting starting. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, now I want to show you guys this. Okay. So like I said, this is social media manipulation. Absolutely crystal clear. Take a look for yourself, dude. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know what's driving this. I never, ever ever talk trash about YouTube, nor would I, okay? So would you publicly talk trash about the CEO of your company? No, okay? I am an independent contractor, but essentially an employee of YouTube. I am not talking trash about YouTube. I am just showing you the facts about the data on my channel right now, okay? So I think it's important for people to see this and understand what we're talking about. Now, the reason this is important and is a story all of its own is because right now we're in the middle of the election and obviously the power that social media platforms have is very, very big. So what I'm gonna show you is about my own channel and how social media platforms are impacting what is going on going into the election. But the most important part of this is I'm going to empower you guys to demonstrate through straight up data the impact that you guys have on this issue. Okay, so let me show you. Anything that's related to that guy, 
This is what it looks like, okay? We're not talking about have these people seen my channel over here. You're talking about only 5.5% of people watching this video are not subscribed to my channel. And what I'm saying is if you want to see my content, you need to be subscribed because it's not being shown to people who are not, okay? I'll show you another one. Like, let's just pick any random one, 97.3% subscribed, okay? This one, 95.5% subscribed. This one, 98% subscribed. And the common denominator in all of these is that they're about the big guy. Now watch this. This is a video that I did about Cain Velasquez, okay? This is, this is not like super long ago. This is a week and a half ago. One that I did about Cain Velasquez and look, 51% to 49% subscribed versus not subscribed. And I gained 351 subscribers, okay? So to be clear, there's nothing different about this except the topic. And if I go into any video that is not about the big guy, this is what it looks like in terms of like what percentage of people are seeing the content, all right? Now, let me show you how you guys have a huge impact though. So this one right here that I just moved over looks the same, right? 55 to 45 must be about whatever. Nope. This one, this one is titled, uh, this is the one that I did about, uh, about Trump and Tom Hanks, okay? And look at this. It got 1,600 new subscribers and was shown to 5545. This is the only video, the only video that was shown to a much wider audience when it was about this topic in the last month or so. And you wanna know what was different? Is my subscribers shared it on social media, okay? Literally bypassed the algorithm by sharing it. And then it got, it, it went, you know, grew that way. And so my point is this. You guys can have an, I'm not saying like, I, you know, help me out. I mean, it would be nice to help me out, but I'm, I'm happy with, with the size of my channel. What I'm saying is like, if you want people to see content that you guys think is important, share it. It doesn't matter how big your platform is. That is very important to do. Now let's jump into the actual topic at hand here. All right. So that is what I've got. You guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel and share the content. If you could, you guys are the best. Bye-bye.